Okay, so we're going to look at um, one other way that we have for combining functions, which is function composition. Um, now, function composition is, is, is fairly complicated and in, in some ways more complicated than it at first seems. Um, so the, the basic idea, which I'm sure you've, you've probably seen, is, well, if somebody hands you two functions, f and g, you define this new composite function, f o g, whose value at x is given by first evaluating g at x and then taking that output and using it as an input for f. Right? So g is evaluated at x, f is evaluated at g of x. Okay? Um, sometimes it helps to sort of think schematically about what's, what's going on when you're doing a function composition. So if, uh, if g is a function from a to b, okay, so then that means that we start with a, right? That's where x lives. x is in here. And we apply this function g. Now we're over at b, right? That's where g of x lives. Now I want to use g of x as an input for f. That means that f, well, f needs to have b as its domain, OK? f should go from b to c. So then I can define f here, OK? And f of g of x will make sense. And so the composition is really the one that kind of takes you from here to there, f composed with g. So you think of it as sort of the direct route that doesn't pass through b. Um, that's the composition. Uh, now, occasionally we can relax things a little bit here. Um, f doesn't necessarily need to be defined on the entire codomain for g, but at minimum it has to be defined on the range, right? So one of the things you need, right, sort of a, a necessary condition here is going to be that the range, um, oops, the range of G has to be a, if you like, a subset of the domain for F, right? So every output for G has to be an allowed input for F. That's what this is saying, right? in order to define the composition. So those are the basic ground rules, right? So as far as when is composition defined, if I wanted to write down the domain, um, so the domain is going to be, so if we're working over the reals, it's going to be all real numbers x that, one, belong to the domain of g, and two, uh, when plugged into g, give me something that belongs to the domain of f, right? So you kind of have to think carefully about how to form these compositions. Uh, if we want to look at some basic examples, we could look at, say, f of x equals x squared. We could look at g of x equals, oh, let's go with something like an exponential function. Okay, So we can do that. So then it makes sense to ask, well, what is, what is f of g of x? Well, we can kind of think about it two ways. We can think about this as f of g of x, so f of e to the x. So that would be taking e to the x and squaring it. Okay. Or I guess you could also think of it as you could think of it as you could kind of here I've kind of told you ahead of time what g of x is but not yet what f of x is. We could do it the other way around. 
we could also say that it's g of x squared. But then, of course, once you plug in that g of x is equal to e to the x, um, you're back at the same spot. Right? Uh, now, you might do one more step if you remember your laws of exponents. If you square a power, right, a power raised to a power, you multiply the exponents. So you get e to the 2x. Um, now, one of the things that's worth pointing out here is that order of composition is, is important, right? So going, going from A to B to C is not the same thing as, as if, if you did F first and then G, you'd be going from B to C and then trying to get to A. Well, I guess you have to hope that C and A have something to do with each other, right? Um, now, of course, we're, we're in this situation where a, B, C, all these sets, they're always subsets of the real numbers. So generally we're okay. In this case, both of these functions are defined for every real number. So we don't have to worry about domain. We just have to worry about putting these things together. So in this case, if I'm doing G of F of X, well, this time I'm taking G of X, which is E, E to the power F of X, okay? Where F of X is X squared. So what I get is e to the x squared, okay? And that's a very different result from e to the 2x. Those are not the same function, okay? So order matters. Um, if we do one more example, well, let's, let's keep the same f of x. Let's take, uh, let's take h of x to be the square root function. Okay, so now we could ask, what is um, f of h of x? Okay, so f of h of x would be, well, inside function is the root function, outside function is the squaring function. Square root of x squared, right? And, and of course, if you square a square root, square root goes away, you're left simply with x. Um, now, you have to be a little bit careful. You don't necessarily want to leave it just at that because if we do want to pay attention to domain, right, in order to define this composition, right, I first need x to be a valid input for h, and I have to make sure that h of x is a valid input for f. Now, everything is valid input for f, but h of x does not take negative numbers as input. So I have to actually put a little condition here that f of h of x is equal to x, um, but I can only consider x bigger than or equal to zero. Okay? So you have to be a little bit careful about that. Um, if you do the other order of composition, there's also something interesting that happens. h of f of x. So now you're going to take x squared, and you're going to take the square root. And again, you might be tempted to say that the square and the square root should cancel and just leave you with x. Well, once again, that's actually only valid if x is bigger than or equal to 0. Um, so if you think about what happens when you put a negative number in there, if I put in something like minus 2, I square it. Minus 2, if I square it, I get plus 4. If I take the square root of 4, I get 2. I get positive 2, not negative 2. So any, any negative number that I use as an input here will be made positive. All right? Same number, opposite sign. Well, we actually we know a function that does that. This is actually the absolute value function. Okay? So those are some basic examples using function composition. Um, you, can, you can look for more. Uh, of course, choose any functions you like. You can always plug one function into another. Um, here's, uh, here's maybe one you could try as an exercise. We could take something like uh, f of x is x squared minus 2x. g of x is going to be, let's say, x over x minus 1. And you can try doing composition in either order, right? Uh, the important thing to remember here is keep a good handle on function notation. If I'm doing f of g of x, right, that means I take g of x, 
And everywhere I see an x, I plug in g of x. All right, so f of g of x, we could write that as, well, g of x squared minus 2 times g of x. All right. Your next step would be, of course, to plug in g of x. And then if you want, you can simplify. And then you could try the other order if you want. Right? Um, but you got to make sure you slow down, do these things carefully. It's easy to make algebra mistakes if you're, if you're not being careful with these. 